Hello everyone, today we are in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and we are just miles away from the White Sands facility, which is part of NASA. So it's super exciting to be here today. And with me, I have Michael Kearns. Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about the White Sands facility and what it does? Sure, thanks, thanks Brad. What we do is we manage for NASA the TDRS string of satellites. They're in geosynchronous orbit, around the US and are in constant communication with the space station, Hubble uh, Space Telescope, and a lot of the low Earth orbit missions that NASA have. And how is that part of the, the broader you know, NASA? I mean, NASA has facilities all over the, the place. NASA so has facilities all over the place. And what we do is the communication for low Earth orbit missions, uh, like I said, other satellites, Hubble Space Flight Center, uh, things like JPL are deep space networks, mm -hmm. which my company, Periton, also manages for the most part, but those are more of the further out uh, for Mars exploration, Saturn, anything going out of the uh, solar system kind of thing. So overall, uh, we have the communications of being able to distribute and disseminate the uh, satellite communications for all of the weather satellites, uh, any space pictures, you know, like the Hubble uh, Space Telescope, any information that comes from there, the pictures come through our facility in, in Las Cruces wow. and are disseminated throughout the world, basically, depending on uh, what we're looking at. So I know you've been working out at that facility for 12 years at the yes. NASA facility, but you mentioned Periton. So tell us what Periton is. And Periton how is a government contractor for defense and for NASA. So we manage a lot of the, the communications for NASA here. Like I said, JPL, we have a presence uh, back at Goddard. I think there's one out in Marshall, Space Flight Center, Johnson. Our home base is in uh, Virginia. Um, we have about 30,000 people, I think, worldwide no, uh, doing stuff. It's a big organization. And so one of the things that, that we're also looking at is being able to do tech refresh. So that's one of our things that, that I'm also participating in. So yeah, let's talk a little bit more about what your specific group does. Sure. I know that y'all, you know, you, you mimic the ground control, like what's the equipment behind Basically, it? Basically, uh, what we have is a, a research lab and we have a new ground system coming in uh, that was designed back in 2010. We've just taken over the, uh, the management of it. We're starting to run through tests to make sure everything works okay. Up until then, uh, we had a mimic of what their hardware was so that we could have systems engineers, hardware engineers, software engineers come in and get a feel of what, what the system does along with all the COTS tools. We have about 170 computer off the shelf uh, tools that we use to keep the complex running, the, the Chedris complex running uh, 24 hours a day. Someone's out there all the time communicating with, with the software for the space station, especially if there are people up there to make sure everything's safe and we're, we're managing the assets for NASA you know, effectively. So the folks up in the space space station right now, when they're communicating back home, it's going through. It's, it's going through uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. That's, that is so, so neat. Uh, basically what will happen is we will command one of the Tedrises and we have a fleet of 13 uh, Tedris spacecrafts. Uh, one was lost during the, uh, the Challenger explosion. Uh, we've had two that were super synced. The hardware started running down because it, it's basically the, the architecture from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so we expend all the, uh, the fuel in it and then the Tedris analysts will move it to just outside what's called a parking lot where it won't degrade and come into the earth but it won't go flying out in space. So it just sort of stays there. So we have 10 satellites in geosynchronous orbit around the earth, uh, which means they stay at the same place. Six are active at any one time, and we have some backups in case there are problems. We have the two ground stations here. We have another ground station in Guam, so we can cover all of the Earth and any satellites that need uh, their telemetry being, uh, being brought down to the Earth, or commands being brought up to the TTRIS and over to, like, like I said, the space station or, or the Hubble. 
So regardless of how that communication is getting down to earth, it eventually comes through this facility Correct. here. That you're Correct. And, and then that gets distributed to Johnson, Goddard, JPL, and the other projects that we're taking a look at. And consequently, it's also uploaded, so we can send commands up to the satellites so they can move around for momentum, momentum unloading to, to keep them stabilized. So yes, uh, we command the, the, the satellites. Uh, telemetry comes back and forth. All sorts of different things, videos, music, any of that kind of stuff uh, will come through our facility for the space station and other satellites. Uh, that's so cool. All right, so I know the satellite equipment has some pretty stringent requirements. Right. So, so when you are, are looking at, all right, we're going to you know, work with this satellite and the, and the requirements that they need from a compute perspective, what all is involved in specking out the right equipment to make sure that all that data can get received and processed right. and distributed? Well, one of the things that we have to look at is for our customers, uh, the other NASA project sites, what equipment are they using, basically? And then we will move around of what their needs are. It's a little difficult because you have some satellites like uh, Hubble, which have been up there for, I think, 30 years or whatever. So their equipment needs are different from let's say when uh, the James Webb uh, Space Telescope will go up to, to replace that. They're just different kind of things, uh, different needs for those projects. And also for Artemis II, which is the, the return to the moon kind of thing. So one of the things that we've done, at least in, uh, for our lab, is we use Dell. Uh, I have a Dell Latitude uh, 5510. I've had a uh, Latitude 7000 series out there. Uh, we use Dell Precision Towers, uh, 5810s, if I'm not mistaken. So we use Dell uh, because they uh, will, will stand the test of time for the most part. When you have people out in space, you need to be able to have reliability on the equipment that you're taking a look at so that you're in constant communication. You're able to, to get the telemetry back and forth. And if there are problems, we can switch over to the blade servers. With the new system we're getting in, uh, we will be using uh, Dell blades, uh, replacing the ones that were originally put in, even though the, the ground equipment isn't working yet uh, here. We'll be replacing those with the blades that they had before with the new blades from Dell uh, because they're reliable, they're cheaper, they're faster, which is the NASA model for the most part of being able to do it that way. Well, I mean, if it works and they're reliable and they yes. happen to be the less, least, least expensive, expensive. Yep. I mean, that's a win-win right so, there. So, yeah. So, like, when we had a leave from COVID, I have my, like I said, my, my 5510 Latitude. We have uh, my docking station from, from Dell. We have a number of different uh, Dell monitors depending upon what the individual needs are for the analysts, for the, for the engineers. So, we have curved uh, monitors from Dell, uh, and then the regular monitors. For the, the satellite controllers, uh, what, they, what they have is a three by two. So they'll have two columns of three uh, monitors of checking everything for their particular TDRA satellite that they're taking a look at. Wow, that's And, and part of it is, let's make sure nothing goes wrong while we're, while we're taking a look at it, especially if there's a launch. So really, you've got a lot of different personas that you've got to make sure they have the right compute Absolutely. for. Absolutely. And right. I would even say that the, the satellite itself has, has got its own little persona. That's right. This is yeah, what I, I need. You know, the first TDRS satellites were from the 1980s. So again, you're looking at 40 years worth of history in, in what their technology is versus the latest one, which is TDRS 13, uh, which is the third generation, which can do more on... Uh, the, the bands of communication that we're taking a look at. So you have to keep up with, uh, with what the new technologies are. And so that's why we've chosen Dell. So with the precision, like what, you know, that, that desktop that's, that's doing part of the compute, you mentioned the Dell Blade servers. Yes. So I'm envisioning that this comes down from space and it's satellite equipment, and then it starts to get to the, the Dell compute side, the server area, right. and then back out to the desktop. How does that flow work? And what happens if, if one of those areas isn't working like it should. And well, well, we have a redundant system. If a system goes down, let's say a rack server goes down or, or a blade goes down, we use a virtual environment with VMware. We can quickly move over to another blade, not lose any of the information, 
and be able to keep on, on working for the most part. What we have is a maintenance and test facility where we will check out any anomalies that are going on for the most part, test out new equipment. Uh, that's what our lab has been doing is testing out new hardware and new software. And that was one of the reasons why we were able to cho choose Dell for their, uh, for the new blade servers that, that we're getting in because the original blade servers for the, for the ground system, what the company that was designing the, the system, they chose uh, Lenovo blades. Uh, maybe that was okay at the time, but a year after they bought the blades and, and populated everything, IBM sold Lenovo to the Chinese. And so we couldn't use those anymore, so we started doing experiments and checking out different hardware. So we, we checked uh, the, the PowerEdge. Uh, I think we're, we're looking at the MX7000 series versus the Lenovo, and we also looked at HP. And again, the Dell Blade servers were faster, cheaper, and better. So nice. Just keeping with the NASA model. Yeah, yeah, very good. So this Dell equipment that you're specking out, is, it's Dell equipment that anybody can go buy. I mean, absolutely, nothing absolutely. Super I mean, special I mean, about it. it one of the things can... that we're trying to do is to make sure it's commercial off the shelf, hardware and software, so that we can plug and play with anything. And we found that uh, the, the Dell blades fit better, um, better capacity, more information that we can store on a single blade than, than we could any of the other competitors for the most part. So that's why we're, we're doing that. And even when that's done, we'll be looking at tech refresh probably every three to five years of refreshing what NASA has out there, what we've specced out, what we've managed. There will always be a churn to try to keep up with it, what everybody else is doing, the new projects that are coming along for NASA, as well as being able to uh, maintain the other systems for the older satellites and projects that are going on. And you were telling me that even the, the client side, you mentioned the latitudes and the precisions, that that is part of the system that has to be up and running. Like without the client side of things, communication Yeah, we have, we have an administration land, and then we have a uh, basically a work land is what you would call it. And that's what we use the, the Dells for, is to be able to go back and forth to both of those lands. So we can do the administrative work for configuration management, for the software builds, for that kind of stuff. And the other part for the work environment to put new releases out there, change the hardware equipment, spec out system administration tools, those kind of things. Right. Yeah, so the laptop used, if that happens to go down, that's, that's, it, that's yeah, a problem. It, and you, you know, right. you know, it's, and, it's, and it's part the, of the whole it's process. Part of, it's part of the whole process, process. And, and we usually have spares hanging around just in case we, you know, we've, sure. we, we have a bridge with, with NASA, with, with Dell that we're working with, so unlimited spares so that we can get it out here within, within a day if there's a problem. It's kind of neat to think that, you know, the precision I'm using could be the same model that's down that's the road right. that's yep. Absolutely. doing satellite Absolutely. Yep. telemetry doing, stuff. doing the satellite work. Yes. That's awesome. All right, so you mentioned that, you know, we talked about Periton and there's a lot going on with NASA, obviously, and compute. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me about how you're looking at how can we combine all of our requirements to help out, you know, all of NASA, not just particular uh, you know, what's going on here at White Sands. Tell right. us a little so, bit more about so that. So one of the things that we're looking at is I'm part of what NASA calls the SENSE program, which is the Space Exploration Network Services and Evolution. My title is SENSE Technical Manager. I guess when I leave there, I'll be the nonsense technical manager <laughs> for the most part. Uh, but for right now, what we're trying to do is also look at the other aspects of the SENSE project and they are all over the place in, in the US and how can we better combine our tech refresh so, so we minimize the differences in, in equipment and hardware and software and what, what's the commonality that we can bring together. And we're doing the same thing for uh, Periton as well. We're trying to put a tech refresh group together so it's outside of just the SENSE contract but also other NASA contracts and DO, DOD contracts as well. You know, what's the commonality so that we can move people around if we need to, especially in the environment that we have now uh, where there's a lot of remote workers. It becomes a little bit easier if we have a commonality on, let's say, the laptops, you know, latitude series, be able to go around and, and get work done. 
And I think that's a, that's a good tip for you know, any large organization. I think sometimes even enterprises or you know, mm -hmm. government right. uh, facilities that are like, all right, here's my department. I'm going to go out and buy and spec out whatever compute I need. But if you look at it at a larger scale, you could right. probably get a better buy. Maybe for the same amount of money, you can get right. more power, you know, whatever. So that's, yeah, that's for, a good tip for, for us out at, at the complex. We look at reliability more than anything else. We need the equipment to be able to withstand the test of time, you know, to be able to stay up. And if something goes wrong, to be able to, with the redundant system, be able to, to switch over quickly. We tend not to be cutting edge for the most part but we need stuff that's reliable because there are still uh, projects that use tape drives. So you, you need to be able to back up stuff to tape drives for them in case there's a problem in communication on their end or our end. Well, you mentioned you know, the Hubble um, telescope out there is 30 years old, so you right. can't, can't get out there to that's do That's right, the you can't refresh. fix stuff out there. So <laughs> it, it becomes, NASA looks at us and say, you guys have to fix it. You know, we right. have to fix that's our awesome. environment to be able to get to the satellites uh, and the projects out there. And I'm, I, you know, for obvious reasons, you all are wanting reliability versus cutting edge, but you know, I think a lot of other companies might, might be in that same situation yeah, to I say, think so. hey, we've yeah. got to have something that's rock solid that, that right. works. It's really interesting that you're able to find that with off the shelf, you know, the Dell Latitudes, Dell Precisions, you know, the monitors that you talked about, I, that, that I'm envisioning that. Those, that yeah, on the hardware side, it, it's, 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 it fits our needs and, and does a really good job. Fantastic. We uh, have a virtual machine. Uh, when I first came out there, it was software on bare metal for the most part. And that gets very tedious to try to fix. So on the new system, we're using virtual machines, uh, so we're using uh, VMware, uh, vSphere, with vSAN and, and the rest of it. So one of the experiments that, that we were doing that NASA wanted to take, have us take a look at was could we run different versions of VMware at the same time? So we ran VMware uh, 5.5 update 2, 6, and 6.5 all at the same time, and there was no problem with uh, communication back and forth. Uh, we're not a full capacity to what the new ground station would be, but we have the COTS tools and, and we can play around and, and make sure that it looked okay so that we go forward. So we were able to bring NASA people out from Goddard, sit down, show them what we were able to do. We were able to show the same thing with, like I said before, we have Lenovo blades on the new system, but they're being shipped out for PowerEdge uh, MX7000 for Dell. And so what we showed was we could have some of those Lenovo blades, but the Dell blades running at the same time, running those different versions of VMware at the same time without major problems. Uh, one of the, you know, like I said before, we needed to get rid of the Lenovo blades because of the, the Chinese buying it. They weren't able to update the firmware from the last time that Lenovo actually had it before they went to the Chinese. They couldn't communicate past 5.5 update 2 without dropping pack message packets or uh, performance degradation uh, from the system. So it's part of the things that we're looking at for updating some of the COTS tools that we're looking at, showing that, yeah, we can still work with, with the Dell blades on, on the system, with working with VMware. One of the other things that, that we're able to do, because a lot of the software engineers are uh, coming out of college, the proposed uh, configuration management uh, tool was from IBM. They went, why don't you use GitLab? Let's play around with GitLab. Said, come on down to our, uh, our lab and showed that we could work Dell blades while we're replacing the Lenovo blades with uh, software uh, running VMware 5.5, 6, 6.5, and be able to do uh, uh, configuration management uh, build updates. From that. So we're able to consolidate over uh, basically more of an industry standard of GitLab and drop the uh, configuration management. And that's what we'll be doing going forward. Uh, we'll have a redundant lab that will, you know, like I said, take tech refresh every three to five years and just go, let's see if we can, you know, change the databases that we're using out there, can, you know, those kind of things from hardware and a software perspective, which is what we've been able to do. So while you're keeping 
equipment out in space that's been out there for decades running, and you know how to do that, you're constantly looking at, okay, how do I get new things out there, or how do I break something to say, okay, now how can I... Right. Still, still got to communicate to Hubble that's 30 so, years old. So. I, and that's, and that's par part of the, the reason for getting virtual machines and using the Dell equipment is how can we update, you know, because you'll have to take those things offline uh, to update, is that going to be okay? And in a virtual environment, you won't even notice it mm -hmm. for the most part because we just, you just switch where the, where the hardware is. So are you all starting to look at Kubernetes? We have actually uh, done experiments with Kubernetes and, and certainly with uh, 7.0 and uh, update 2, Kubernetes will be a part. So yes, we will be looking at that in Tanzu and, and we've done some experiments with that and it looks really good from what we can see. So we'll be going that way too. Well, if you're starting to use more off the shelf, uh, you know, equipment that, that's a, a lot of advantages to that, I think it's also an advantage from an aspect of the talent pool. You mentioned some of the engineers absolutely, that are coming out Absolutely, absolutely. They're coming yeah. out of college out and, of and, and we're used to using that. So, and I'll even put in a plug for, you know, we're looking, Periton is always looking at, for the complex of looking for software engineers, systems engineers, hardware engineers, network engineers uh, to come out and work in a fun place. Looking at equipment that uh, keeps the space station going, keep uh, the satellites going and uh, keeps the projects going. So it's, it's a cool environment. That sounds like it. So what would you, what advice would you give to the Dell client community just about, you know, your experiences and, and Dell in general? What I would say is for the Dell client community is to join the Dell client community, uh, get involved. That's what I've been doing. There's a lot of good technical knowledge. Uh, the same thing with VMware. Uh, there are a lot of user groups out there. You have technology resources that you can take a look at. You'll be able to see what new equipment's coming on the horizon, the new precisions that are coming out that look really cool, the new versions. You know, VMware Advantage is a great thing to have because you can play around in the labs for a year, you know, looking at new stuff. I know we are uh, on their, their beta team. So we can download some beta stuff and start playing around with it so that we know what's coming in the future and we can get ready to uh, go forward with it. So yes, I would say definitely get involved in the community. It's worth the time and effort to, to do that. And the community is a great place for people to, you know, interact with, with NASA and, and people like, like you and your engineers and small businesses can learn from yeah. that and enterprises can learn. And we can learn. I mean, I've learned a lot of stuff from just some of the small businesses of being able to put stuff together and what they're looking at, you know, for VMware. It's uh, their home labs uh, of people just putting their home labs together. Yeah. Yeah. For, for Dell, all the, all the Dell different, you know, laptops and, you know, what they like things that it would change. Uh, the other thing I would say is when you join the community and you're asked to, to participate in a survey, do the survey. We have a bridge now uh, with Dell for all of our company for, for Periton so that we can look at tech, technology refresh. If you want Dell to be a partner, that's what you want to be able to do is be able to have, here's what I need, here's what I'm looking for, here are the things that we're looking for over the three to, next three to five years. And I've talked to a lot of people from Dell. Uh, they're all very knowledgeable, and they like hearing the stories that, that I like to tell, and I'm sure the stories that other people would like to tell them and what they're looking at and what they need the equipment for. It's interesting. So the Dell partnership is, is I mean, they really are a partner with it, Periton. That's right. That's what we're, we're, we're looking at right now. Uh, for the new system, we are running, uh, the new system coming out here on the software side is running VMware 5.5 Update 2, and we have those Lenovo blades. So we are partnering with Dell and VMware, and basically they're going to come out when we start the uh, conversion, and that will be, that'll take about two years uh, to get all the blade servers going. But they're coming out and they will teach us how to do it. They'll, they'll come out, show us how to do it. Then we will take one with them looking over our shoulder and then we're ready to go with, with everything else. So it is a partnership uh, with NASA, Periton, and the Dell community and VMware. Michael, thanks so much for sitting yeah, down with us and talking about all the neat things that are happening over there at uh, Periton and NASA. And we can't thank you enough for being here. Thanks for sharing I'm your glad, story. I'm glad you were able to come out and we could share our story. 
Thank you for watching today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and learning about what Michael is doing at the White Sands facility and at NASA. Your tech, your voice.